Yeah. At the time, the world couldn't get enough of Princess Diana. Her decision to open up, only fueling further that demand. Only now, the build-up and the tactics used to encourage her to talk have been uncovered. In 127 pages, Lord Dyson forensically details the questions asked at the time and the cover-up. In memos previously seen by Sky News, it was clear the BBC knew that Martin Bashir had fake documents and Lord Hall had spoken to him about it. An interview that Dyson describes as woefully ineffective. The investigation, he said, did not achieve its purpose of getting to the bottom of what Mr Bashir had done or why he'd done it. Even a note from an internal meeting said the Diana story is probably now dead unless Spencer talks. Anne Sloman, then acting head of Weekly Current Affairs, admitted to Lord Dyson that it sounds a bit like the Mafia, but it wasn't meant that way, I promise you. Killick was the Panorama producer who first told the BBC about the forged documents. It was a difficult climate to work in. And when myself and others were faced with the, with the situation of referring these documents up, we knew it was going to be difficult. We knew it wasn't uh, news that the BBC would want to hear. What we didn't expect was a smear campaign, a cover-up, and ultimately all to be sacked. But calls to the press office from that time show that other journalists had been asking questions about whether Bashir had told Diana she was being spied on. Dyson found that the BBC had covered up such facts as it had been able to establish about how Mr Bashir secured the interview. He said that by failing to do so, the BBC fell short of the high standards of integrity and transparency, which are its hallmark. 25 years on, the revelations have again undermined that reputation. The cover-up is shocking. I mean, how can the BBC accuse government ministers or civil servants or leaders of, of public and private institutions of not being transparent and open with the public and are accountable when they, they as a corporation have behaved in this way. That's the, that's the damaging part of it. The awards and the accolades were why they wouldn't want anything to overshadow what was described internally as the scoop of the century. Those closest to Diana believe it changed the course of her life, but the interview put Martin Bashir in pole position for future projects. He approached Mark Bukowski about an interview with Michael Jackson when he represented him in the UK. He said, look what I did with Diana, it became a great event and she's very pleased. At this point, he brought out a letter uh, well, that letter was on, on, on Kensington Palace, had no papers, I remember, um, but it was certainly signed by Anna, Diana and I read it and it was a fulsome praise of, of him and, um, and the interview. Even if Diana had wanted to talk without the fake documents, Lord Spencer would never have introduced her to Martin Bashir, a meeting that he says stoked her paranoia and mistrust, damage that no report or apologies can ever repair. Rhiannon Mills, Sky News.